So, according to Mike Coppinger, your Dennis Hugas and Errol Smith Jr. are finalizing a deal to face off in late March or April. The target date is March 25, 2022. Stepnos, I believe his name is, uh, the guy who stepped aside. His name is Emantua Stetanos. I'm, I'm not butchered that name, so please forgive me. The guy who is stepping aside is going to fight Rajab Butayev. For the WBA regular title, winners of both fights must face each other next. Now, before we get the video, do not forget to like and subscribe, share the video. The channel is growing a lot. Thanks to you guys. Just this past weekend, we've gained 60 subscribers. Hopefully, we can, we can reach 2100 before New Year's Day. We started this channel just a year ago. I know I've had this channel for a while, but I started posting. Uh, the first fight I covered was the Gravine Davis versus Leo Santa Cruz fight. And we're already at close to 2,100 subscribers. So I'd greatly appreciate it if you guys can subscribe. So Earl Smith Jr. versus Dennis Sugas. Obviously, that's a good fight. The number two and number three, Walter Woods going at it. But what's sad to see is that we could see the number one and two going at it. Crawford and Spence. But Spence is choosing to fight Ugas, who's a tough fighter, tough competitor. My opinion has been Sean Porter. Just a fantastic fighter. But he's choosing to fight him instead of fighting Terrence Crawford. Terrence Crawford right now is a promotional free agent. The fight is very easy to make now. No obstacles in the way. I'm pretty sure they can get it done if they want to get it done. But as I said... Errol Spence is choosing to fight the easier fight. I'm not sure why. Why don't you believe in yourself? Before the car accident, I always thought Errol Spence Jr. would walk through Terrence Crawford. I'm going to have to be honest about that. That's, that was my perception of the fight. But after the car accident, after the eye injury, I started to think that Terrence Crawford would uh, easily beat Errol Smith Jr., and the Ugas for Spence fight, had they fought two years ago, I would say this is a mismatch in Spence's favor. I don't think so anymore. I think it's a pick-up fight. I think it's going to be a 50-50 fight. Both fighters are going to have their moments. Ugas will not be bullied. On the inside, outside, or mid-range, he's a very big guy. And you saw what he did to Manny Pacquiao. Some people thought that fight was competitive with Manny Pacquiao. I didn't. I thought it was a very one-sided fight. And I thought many, and I expected it to be a one-sided fight. I posted a video that said, if Ugas is not injured, He's going to stop Manny Pacquiao late. He didn't stop him late, but he dominated him throughout the fight. And I thought the Errol Spence versus Manny Pacquiao fight, style-wise, would have been a tricky fight for Errol Spence. Because Ugas, he's not as stiff as Spence. Spence is kind of stiff. If he gets hit, he'll just cover up. He doesn't have angles. He's not going to move out, out of the way. Where Ugas, no, he, he's not stiff whatsoever. He's uh, He goes through the motions. He has more than one gear, where I believe Spence, even though he he sometimes raises his level of intensity, he has one gear. Especially in the Danny Garcia fight, in the Mike Garcia fight, in the Sean Porter fight. His last three fights, he's been fighting off one gear. It's not like how we, he dealt with Cal Brook or Lamar Pearson. Oh, I think those guys, be, bigger wins than the, the past two wins, in my opinion. The past two or three wins. Because I believe Cal Brook... And Lamar Pearson 147 are bigger wins than Mikey Garcia. Mikey Garcia, above lightweight, has not been impressive. As you saw the other day, he lost to Sandra Martin very clearly. Sandra Martin, an unknown commodity. Not a really good fighter. He still got beat from pillar to post by Sandra Martin. So I think the way he dealt with Cal Brook, Lamar Pearson, Chris Algieri, those were all impressive. He's failed to do that in his last fights. He's been happy just jabbing. And boxing his way to a decision, which is not what made him that fearsome fighter. What made him the fearsome fighter is he's like a a lawnmower machine. He would mow down his opponents. He would just constantly, constantly work and hurt you to the body and hurt you to the head. And he might not have the biggest one punch power, but he just is so relentless. You'll never get him off your chest. That's what made Errol Spence Jr. so special. And Errol Spence Jr. has lost that. It's to do to how he's carrying himself outside the ring. It's due to the car accident. It's due to the eye injury that he had. All those play a part. I guess Danny Garcia 
I was shocked. I gave Daniel Garcia a chance to win that fight just with the car accident. We haven't seen him fight in a year, and he's coming off a car accident. He won that fight. He outboxed Daniel Garcia. But that's not enough at this level. That's not enough against Terrence Crawford. That's not enough if you want to move up to 154 and fight Jamal Charlo. It's not enough. It's going to be very intriguing to see if it is enough against Rodenis Ugas. Uh, obviously, we're going to make several videos covering this fight. We're going to make a game plan for Rodenis Ugas. We're going to make a game plan for Earl Spence Jr. We will make a prediction. So I would advise you guys to subscribe, share the video, and uh, give me your thoughts in the comment section below. Sadiq Boxing out.